Hi! This morning I'm going to be coloring a page from Coloring History, Tudor Queens and Consorts, which is being printed as I speak, and we're very excited to share it with you. It should be done soon, and pre-orders are happening now, and books will start shipping on May 1st. So today I'm choosing to use only my color pencils, although you can use crayons, markers, pastels, your choice of medium. Um, but this particular session is just to show you how I use my colored pencils to create different layers of color and shading um, and kind of how I try to bring a little bit of three dimension to these otherwise flat black and white line drawings. Um, the one I'm picking today is Catherine of Aragon, one of my favorite drawings from the new book. So um, let's get started. Okay, so here's Catherine of Aragon, and um, this is based on a portrait painted around 1531, which, um, according to Natalie's beautifully written caption, derives from a miniature of the queen painted by Lucas Hornbolt, or Hornbout, in about 1525. And the symbolism here is um, Catherine offers the monkey a coin, but he ignores it, preferring instead the jeweled crucifix worn at the queen's breast. The monkey demonstrates its obedience to the church, much like its mistress did in the final years of her marriage to Henry VIII. So that is a very significant portrait, and it was a pleasure to, to draw this. And now let's go ahead and add some color. I have, oops, that's loud. Um, I, based on the original painting, I'm sort of looking at this color palette. It's a little bit more um, colorful because we're coloring, but at the same time, um, it kind of goes with with her palette from the painting. And I wanted to add before we start is that this is on regular um, printer paper. I don't have the final book yet, so I've just printed this out on a sheet in my standard printer. Um, there's actually a dent there from my my mishandling of the paper. And I'm using another pad of paper underneath for uh, for padding because otherwise the pencil can pick up lines from the table below. And when you're in the book, there's going to be pages behind it, so you already have automatic padding. So for this case, I just added some sheets just to make sure I had a nice soft touch with the pencil. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with the the skin tone here and I'm going to start in very lightly because the key is to start light meaning light pressure the lightest color you might possibly want and then you can always make it darker by adding more pressure more of the same color or a layer of another darker color on top for shadow Then I take my pencil and as I'm adding more shadow, I go the opposite direction, kind of a crosshatch from what I was doing before. I was moving the pencil like this to the shape of her face almost. You want to kind of keep your lines going with the shape of the, the contour that they're on. And then when I'm starting to add my shading, I can go in a little bit crosshatching and just very subtly adding some dimension. This is going to be a subtle process. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit more depth now with some more pressure here because I have a shadow. You can see there's a line right here. So I've indicated to myself and to people coloring that there's an indentation for her nose right here. And that you can go ahead and start putting a little bit more pressure. And this is the same pencil I started with, but you can see it's getting darker the more, the more pressure and the more layers of the color that I add. A little shadow for her chin because you can see there's a line there to sort of help you see that I, I'm putting a shadow there. And of course we have the chin here. Very important regal element to have a nice solid chin in these portraits. So there's going to be some shadow next to her headdress as it approaches her skin. Probably a little shadow under her hair here. And I want that to be a little darker. I think under the eyes, eyebrows is going to be, and under the chin, it's going to be kind of the darkest parts of this. 
Now, I have subtle lines here, but as you want, you can add your own. So I just continued the under eye here, and you can see I added a little bit of shadow here, so it sort of gives that depth of, of a more three-dimensional portrait. I'm gonna do an overall light layer over the whole face. This is blending. This is sort of blending it together. I'm barely touching the page, but you can see now I'm taking out any leftover white and kind of reducing the contrast between the shadows I've already put in by kind of putting one layer of color on top, a thin layer. But I do want to go in with something a little bit darker here, and I'm not sure if this is going to be too dark, but we'll find out. So I'm going to start really light because I don't want to I don't want to make it too extreme of a shadow, but really light pressure here with my brown. I think this is going to be okay. I'm not going to press too hard, and I'm going to just continue that line I started there. See how I'm just doing, moving the black line here, and I'm making it into a brown pencil line. And um, there's going to be more more shadow right as we approach her headdress. Okay, I'm going to add some more shadow here, under the nose here. Okay, I feel like that line right there is a little bit too dark. It's sort of like a little mustache. So I'm going to just add another layer of this tone over the whole face. To almost reduce the contrast again of the shadows I just added so it's not as extreme. So I went ahead and added some hair color. I went in and added brown eyes because in the portrait she has brown eyes. And then I added some lip tone here. So I feel like I'm going to move on to the headdress now. And in the portrait, and you don't have to follow the portrait, I often don't actually, but in this case I decided to give it a try. Um, this section is reddish brown and then the trim is sort of a an ivory with the pearls and then this is very dark and I it looks black to me in the painting it might not have originally been totally black maybe a sort of a red dark dark red black velvet but um, it could have been black I feel like she probably wore black a lot um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start with this black layer and I'll show you how you can add um, you know lines and shadow to make fabric feel a little bit more three-dimensional so again I'm just doing a light layer first and I'm going in the direction that the fabric is going it's going down from here straight down her back almost like hair almost like you would start to draw hair so this is just a thin layer, and then what I'll start to do is as I get, I like to just add, and it's not always a realistic shadow, but it just does bring the picture to life. I don't have the light source here with me as a live drawing to see how I'm doing this, but I'm adding some shadow as you approach the edge here because it sort of feels like the fabric might plump out a little bit. And by adding a shadow next to the, the object it's touching, it gives the impression that it's heading inward, as if it was here, out, and now it's heading in, and therefore there's a shadow. Tuck, it's sort of tucking in underneath this, this part. Sort of change direction of the pencil a little bit. This helps blend it together. I don't use any blending tools, but you are welcome to. When I went to college, they taught us we had to use our pencils. We couldn't use our even our finger to smudge. We had to use our pencils to make the blend. So I'm sort of used to at least trying to get a blend with just the different angles of the pencil. And of course, as you can also use the side of your pencil, it's a lot softer. If you use the tip directly, it's gonna be a hard line. So 
So I think it's time to start getting darker here because it is, it is a black uh, piece of fabric. So I probably won't get it as black as it is in the portrait, but I'll get it at least a lot darker. So there she is with her finished, um, the black cloth on top of her headdress is, is finished to a point that I like it. And now I'm going to do um, these sections of the headdress. Um, and then I'll do the lace. So to start, this is sort of one of those things, it's, it's basically white on white, so I don't want to add a lot of tone. I'm going to add some shadow here and it, in the picture it's in the portrait it's it's sort of an ivory tone so I think when you want to have an ivory tone you would use yellows and very light browns to, to create the shadows if it's not ivory you would use white I mean sorry you would use blue to make it look more of like a bright white that's actually what I do when I'm trying to draw a picture that has snow in it I only use blue and gray to shade it because that way it looks bright and crisp. But this yellow adds a little bit of color for fun and it also indicates to me that it's more of an ivory tone. Okay, and then under here, that's a shadow because that's underneath the headdress. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that the yellow tone that I picked for this part of the shadow. And I do have to go back. I also used this color so I have to I'm going to blend the two together to match what I did over here. And in the portrait, the white section is actually just to here. And then we see something darker, another panel here perhaps, and it's sort of a reddish brown. So I'm going to add a little contrast here and have a little fun with the colors. This panel is like this. And this also shows you that I don't always get all the lines in there, but you are welcome to add the details that you want to add. You could have made this whole thing ivory and it would have looked beautiful without that dividing line. You don't see that it has a separator, but I looked at the portrait again and I said, oh, there's a line there. So I'm going to go ahead and just add it in. So there's a lot of flexibility with these. So starting with the lace, it's going to be very similar to her skin tone um, because it is a very thin material. I think the artist, the portraitist, wanted to match that below. So the way I drew it was just a, almost a hint at texture. And that way, whatever you add, however subtle and light it is, will still indicate lace because it's a very very thin material and this is this is just a quick stroke I'm not even going to add much more than that I think that that would be fine um, so I think that's done actually and then I'm going to do these beautiful pearls I think they're pearls some sort of pearl like bead and and they're they're like a blue color which I think is kind of cool I guess they, they must be black pearls. Is that a thing? I think it is. And so in the portrait, I guess they're more gray than this, but I'm going to jazz it up a little and make them blue. I'll probably go back and add a little bit of gray. And, the, and I'm leaving white, little white areas to add the reflection. So the light is hitting these and there's a white spot to show that. And that's all those need. I will go back and add a little bit of gray around the base of each. Just outside the lace is sort of a yellow tone here. Add that in. This is going to be nice and colorful. The original portrait is not this colorful, but I like having a little bit of pizzazz. And then just below here it looks to be like a gold color. So 
I almost finished this section. I just want to show you that it really helps. I, I didn't go super heavy in my um, pressure with the black as I was filling it in, but now that it, I'm done, I can go in and add a heavier line here, and it really makes this section of fabric touching this yellow pop as if it's resting above it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added all the black color to her outfit. And now I'm going to draw uh, to color in the monkey. And he's a reddish, brownish monkey. So I'm going to start with a very light pressure using my Sienna pencil. That's a good name for this color. Some depth with the same exact color in the shadows. And when you look at the drawing, you can sort of use the fur lines as a guide and and also just just pay attention to the edges and that will that will make him pop a little bit on the page. I'm just going to switch pencils to a darker color to go in again even closer to the edges. And then lastly, He's a little bit orange too, so I'm gonna go in with a light pressure of orange and you can see it will come out more. You'll be able to see it on the, some of the areas where the there's not as much pencil right now. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the rest using a time lapse. Um, this is gonna be an ivory color like we did here with some darker tones for the spots. And then this is also ivory. Um, these are going to be the bluish pearls that I did here. This is an ivory cuff here. I'm going to use silver for the coin and then her same skin tone for the hands. Um, and that's about it. So enjoy the time lapse and then I'll show you the finished product when I'm all done. Mm -hmm. 